gonna have content to put on YouTube. I was trying to figure out a video idea that was gonna be sort of fun and like creative, uh, which I might still do involving the Miata, but I'm not sure yet. Because I've had a secret ongoing problem with this, and it's fairly common. Um, here's the video of what's going on. The M and the S in the gear, they are flashing and it's occurring every single time I go and I park for a little bit and then I start it up and go into reverse. If I back in somewhere and just jam her into drive, it's golden. And there's a few things that are, you know, that can cause it and that's bad grounds, low battery voltage, and an XYZ, XYZ switch that needs to be finagled. Today, I'm feeling finagly, and that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take the XYZ switch out and we're gonna fix her up. Also, the other thing that can happen is your condensate line drips right down onto it and you can shove a you know half inch piece of tubing up into it to reroute and I'll show you that. I did that because I thought maybe that was the problem because it's hot and I've been using the air conditioning. Well, that's not the problem. <sighs> Boom. When you come up here in my shop, you take your freaking shirt off, brother. Oh, oh yeah. If you don't want to get a gnarly ass fucking burn like I got, let her cool down. I didn't let it cool down this time either, so I'm going to wrap the exhaust in a leather blanket. Okay, when I say XYZ, you say I've got to pee. It's like, it's that thing right there. And you can see, I'll show you. See the, uh, the new rubber line right there? Well, that goes all the way up to the, the condensate hole right up in there. I'll zoom in. And uh, I just zip tied it because before, right where it goes into the body, that was the exit hole, right? It would just drip right down onto that switch and that can cause problems. You know, not good problems either. Let's take this thing apart here. I'm gonna mark that rod so I can put that back to where it needs to be. And then uh, try to unplug it because the plug is up there. The plug is up there somewhere. Yeah, see, there's the plug. Grab this up here so she doesn't fucking burn me. Also gonna measure the end. It looks like it's sticking out five eighths. Sick. It's like a double nut situation. And it looks like it's a 13, 13 millimeter. You take that loose. I guess. It's bolted to the transmission. Definitely gonna need one of these little things. This, this is sick. Okay, regular ratchet works here. All right, so that middle bolt does have to come off. That's a 13. Then you gotta pull the gear shift back. Make sure your shit's all blocked up so it doesn't roll over you. And then you gotta work this little lever off, you know? But it's fucking seized on there. Hey, also, quick note, this is like barely gonna wanna come out. So what I did was I pushed it really hard up against this and then pushed it up, like bending the top like this and pushing it up against that. And it'll, uh, it'll scrape free, like just barely. It's super tight. Okay, not gonna lie, I really hope that was the hard part. If I could get it, you can get it. Um, we'll replace that. So what you gotta do is you gotta undo those rivets with a drill and then carefully slide everything back off. It looks like um, you gotta mark this. So I'll mark that so that everything goes back on the way I pulled it off. 
Uh, and the holes are elliptical, so that's going to be super fun trying to uh, figure that out. That's great. Oh, God, Land Rovers. Fucking Land Rovers. From what I read and understand, uh, there's like contacts in here that go bad, or they just get used up, I guess, because condensation dripping down on this fucking thing. And then, uh, you yeah. know, you gotta clean them up. We're gonna pull this open and see what it looks like. All right, then you get something to punch these babies out. Oh yeah, there you go. Just a little persuasion should come right out. Those little contacts. I'm pretty sure that's what need to be cleaned. That's what that looks like. I'm just gonna take a little bit of sandpaper and rub those contacts. I'm going to go through with my tester since it's right here and just make sure all these contacts are going across. Yeah. I put a little bit of grease on the gasket, put her back together like so. So I have these screws and they're zinc coated. So maybe I'll do that with a little bit of lock, red Loctite. Keep them all together. That'd be sick. There you go. I'm gonna get a new piece of that. All right, well, we're back under here. It's really hard to like see what's going on, but uh, yeah, you just gotta put it back up in there. The same orientation. So this goes like that up in there. So since those holes were slotted, you could see that there's like a clean spot where the bolt was. And what I found was I used this little mirror so I can see that bolt and make sure that it lines up with the old clean spot. That way I don't have to like fumble around with trying to get this to make contact right and just put it back to how it was. So yeah, you sort of need this little mirror. I found that plugging that in first up there is easier and then slide this up and over this, you know, fucking thing and then down and then on. And you'll see it only goes on one way because the one side is flat and then the other side is um, splined. So it'll go on good. Once this is tightened down, don't forget to make sure that this end piece coming out is the same length as you started. Mine was 5 eighths. That worked out good. And all that stuff's back together. It's plugged in. Let's see uh, what happens. Let me turn my flashlight off real quick. All right, that's more better. All right, let's start her up. I know I have a check engine light. I think that's part of my EVAP shit, but uh, let's see. So we go into reverse. Nice. Please don't turn on, please don't turn on. And then go into drive. She went into drive. No M and S. Yeah, it goes into third, second, first, neutral. Nice. Back into reverse. Looking good. Now, I do want to mention that this is a problem that'll occur 
and you don't have any transmission codes. It'll just be M and S and it'll just be blinking like crazy. So let's see what that check engine light's about. I got 63 codes. Let's see what they are. Read codes, stored codes, no codes. Pending codes, no codes. Let's go to module 18, read codes. No pending codes. Ah, transmission range sensor A, Prindle input. That was a stored code, which I should have probably fixed by doing what I did. And that's funny, they actually sent a check engine light. So let's go and erase that, yes. Okay. And we'll start her back up. because it was getting really bad, especially today, like even turning it off, turning it back on, it would clear, go into reverse, and it would just, it would send the code straight away. Are Land Rovers as annoying to work on as people say they are? Yes, they are. And every time the lights turn on, I freak out. But, like somebody said, notoriously unreliable, but undeniably cool. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, show your parents what you're watching because I don't think I cussed that much. Maybe I did.